Hey friends, it's Julia at the blog farmhouseharvest.net. Today I am just going to show you how to cook a one and a half inch steak. You can do that with a pan frying method. I'll be doing that on cast iron today. You can do that on the grill and you can do it under the broiler. <clears throat> if you're going to use whichever you're going to use, whichever method you're going to use, you want to get your cooking device nice and hot first and season your steaks. I'm going with New York steaks today. Um, Usually we buy a cow at least once a year and the first thing to go are the really good cuts of steak. So, you know, the good cuts of steak are gonna be the New York steak, the filet, the T-bone and the porterhouse, which the T-bone and the porterhouse are both the filet and the New York on the, there, there's a bone between them. So you get all of the goodness right there with those two steaks. But I am out of the good steaks because that's the first thing that we, we enjoy when we buy a cow. So I had to buy these at the local grocery store. What you want to look for when you're buying a steaks is marbling. And the more marbling, the more flavor and the juicier your steak will be. Okay, so you've got your steaks, you've got your grill, your, um, your pan or your broiler nice and hot. You'll set your broiler to the hottest temperature would be four or 500 depending on your oven and get your grill up on high so that your grates are nice and hot and scraped and clean. And if you're using the, the cast iron skillet like I am, just get it nice and hot over a medium high heat and make sure it's nice and hot. If you are using the cast iron skillet like I am, you'll wanna put one or two tablespoons of oil down in there before you put your steaks in. So the first thing that you're gonna do is season your steaks. Honestly, a good steak with lots of marbling is not gonna need a ton of seasoning. These steaks that I got today are not as high quality as the beef that we buy when we get a cow. Um, so I am using today Montreal steak seasoning, and that's just a really coarse salt and pepper with some red pepper flakes in there and garlic and onion, and it's really good. So I definitely recommend that if you haven't tried it. If you have a really high quality steak, all you really need is salt and pepper, and it's delicious. And okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is get our, our, cooking, our cooking device nice and hot and set your steak down in there. If you're going for a rare steak, cook it between four and five minutes on each side. And then on the, so on each side, and then on these sides, you're gonna wanna cook it for 30 seconds each on those sides too, so it's cooked all the way around. If you're going for a medium steak, which is what I like, um, I'm cooking it for six to seven minutes on each side. The first side, you'll cook it for seven minutes. The second side, you'll cook it for six minutes. Or you could go for a medium well, which would be eight minutes and then seven minutes. And then again, cooking it for rare, you cook it one minute longer on the first side. So five minutes on the first side, four minutes on the second side. And if you're going for a well done steak, which I don't recommend, especially with the high quality steaks, you would go for eight to 10 minutes on the first side and then eight minutes on the second side and always 30 seconds on the really narrow sides. One and a half inch steaks are a lot thicker than a usual steak. Most steaks are usually about three quarter inches thick. So this allows you to cook it well on the outsides and still get that nice pink center that is just makes it so juicy and yummy. It's also a lot more satisfying <laughs> It fills you up a lot faster than a steak that's almost half its thickness. So the most important tool that you need when you're cooking meat, especially steaks, because these are expensive and you don't want to waste your money. The most important tool you're going to need is an instant read meat thermometer. And honestly, like every grill, every oven or skillet or stovetop or broiler, they, they're not all exactly the same. And so they're not going to cook exactly the same. So I can tell you five minutes, four minutes, but it depends on your oven. And if you brought your steak to room temperature before you started cooking it, which I definitely recommend you do. So get yourself a really good instant read meat thermometer. That's the most important tool that you will use for cooking meat, period. I, I really do.
Okay, so if you're going for rare, medium, medium, rare, medium, well, or well done steak, it's gonna be at a certain temperature. If you want a rare steak, that will be between 130 and 140 degrees internal temperature at the thickest point. The, the USDA recommends that you cook a steak to 145 degrees to make sure that you kill any germs that might be in there that could make you sick. Um, a lot of people enjoy a rare steak that is not cooked to 145 degrees. Personally, I don't. I'm a medium girl. So for a medium steak, you are gonna wanna cook your steak from 140 to 145 degrees. Once you get to 150 degrees, you're closer to medium well. A medium well steak is 150 to 155, and a well done steak, which I don't recommend, is 160 degrees or more. When you cook your steak to 160 degrees or more, it's gonna be a lot tougher than if you cook it to 155 or between 145 and 155 degrees. After your steaks have reached the internal temperature that you're going for, pull them off your skillet or your grill or out of your broiler and set them on your cutting board. Let them rest for 10 minutes. Usually you'll only let steaks rest for about five minutes, but these are thick steaks. So you're gonna wanna let them rest for only 10 minutes. It's not too long, just so that the juices inside can get redistributed throughout the steaks and don't run out onto your cutting board, leaving your meat dry before you eat it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'll see you next time.